Hey guys, welcome back to the Passive Money Plan. I'm Alex, that's Kirby. Uh, today we're going to be reacting to a video from Brian Adamson um, on YouTube. He's very knowledgeable in the real estate game. So let's check this video out. The reality is though, being a landlord would only get you so far because you're now consumed with maintenance. You're now consumed with every issue that goes on with that property. You're consumed with chasing down your money, right? It really is a full-time job. And for those that want to scale their business, right? Like I'm at 120 units now. I couldn't even imagine having to deal with individual tenants, right? It's hard enough having, you know, meetings with the management company to talk about the tenants, much less if I had to deal with them directly. And so when you look at it, you know, most, they hem and haw about, I don't want to pay 8%. I don't want to pay 10%. Well, think about it though. If your rent's, on one of the units is a thousand bucks. You're gonna pay them a hundred dollars to deal with all your problems. All, like, I want y'all to understand something. I only know one tenant in my whole portfolio. All right, Kirby, this applies more to you. I'm just getting started. I do manage uh, both of my properties, but I know that um, you have many properties that are managed by companies, management companies. So, um, I understand what he's saying, obviously. Um, I know where he's coming from completely. Um, but I know you can elaborate more on this, on the ease of having property management over managing tenants directly. And the first thing I want to send a shout out to Brian Adamson. He he has great content. So uh, we'll put his handle down there in the description, but um, he's he has a wealth of knowledge, people. When I say articulate, he's he's one of the people you know out there really doing the work. He's not sitting here, uh, sitting in a corner just watching news clips and trying to tell people what's going on. And I'm not saying that because he, you know, he, you know, like in a video, he talked about, oh, I have 120 units. It's people on the internet, how many doors and stuff they have all the time. The reason why I say he's a person that's going out there really doing it is you tell the the intellect, you could tell how they're talking, you could tell how their um their mannerisms and different, you know, how he deep dives into certain segments. And you know, I've been watching this channel for about a week and a half now and I noticed that and I've seen him on other uh, shows like one random at a time. He's very he's very deep involved into the uh, psychology side of it and usually only people that can deep dive into the psychology side of it is real operators so again send a shout out to brian, brian adams you know please check out his channel because he has a wealth of knowledge all right now dig, jump it into what he said um he's correct he's correct for the most part let me say that um being a landlord is a full-time job. When I first started off, um, I managed the first two units that I had. I mean, it was in close proximity. I still manage those two units today. But by being a good operator and things like that, I still have the same tenants I've had since I bought the property. Um, so, I mean, for us, it works like clockwork. But when it first started off, I was new to the game. I didn't understand, you know, you know, the whole term of landlord and what it all entailed. I was dealing with calls at different times a day. I mean, you can look at previous videos, funny and horror stories of being a landlord that we posted. But it was, you know, I'm getting calls, you know, different crazy stuff going on. And I'm like, oh, God, this stuff is terrible. But he's right in the fact that if you're consumed with the day-to-day -day operations of running a rental property, talking to tenants all the time. It you you're dealing with that stuff. So you can't fo uh focus on expansion or growing the business at all. Um but now in the same breath as that, that's why I say he's correct for the most part. I mean for me, he's 100 percent correct. But one reason why I'm saying for the most part is because I know people that uh that are landlords that operate. But it's one caveat to that. You gotta have a team. It can't be you know, army of one, you know, you're the only person that the landlord is contacting. Uh, you're going out there turning pipes, turning wrenches, doing all that stuff, have to 
you know, run over there every time there's a problem. What I mean by is a team, and then mostly, and this is how it is in family dynamics. Family dynamics is usually one person's uh, landlord or something like that. And then they're, you know, focused on it, doing that. And then their spouse or whatever really has no part in it. You know, the spouse might ask a question or two every now and then, but besides that, it's completely hands off. If it's a dynamic like that, and most people have a dynamic like that, you know, it's the one-offs that have, you know, the uh, the spouse, I'm not going to say the man or the woman, one person could be focused on, you know, the day-to-day -day operations of being a landlord, and then their spouse is focused on, you know, looking at acquisitions, you know, looking at the financial stuff like that, keeping track of the bookmaking and uh, looking for deals. So it is possible to do it, but it is harder to do it that way. It is possible. So again, I'm not dismissing what Brian Adams is saying because I agree 100. I still manage those properties, but everywhere, everything else is is property management. Property management, and I could tell the difference between the two. I could tell the difference when I was sitting there focused on those two properties that I had. I wasn't focused on nothing else. It wasn't about scaling. It wasn't about anything else. It was just from those two properties, I went to buy a business, and then. And then I bought the business, then I bought the commercial property that the business was in. And then because the, the business was in another state, I used the property manager. And then after having that property manager and the property manager to dealing with stuff, and then I might get an email or then, you know, talk to the property manager every quarterly or something like that, or talk to them if there's a big issue that arises. I seen the, the ease of it. It's you know, I didn't have to sit there and take all the calls the property manager was doing and things like that. And then I, that's when the light bulb switched for me and said, oh, I can focus more on the on growing the business than, oh, phone call, oh, phone call, putting out fires, putting out fires, putting out fires every day. And like I said, I still manage those properties, but those properties is ran. It's like the tenants manage themselves in the two that I still manage myself. But everything else is ran by property managers and the calls that they get all the time. And of course, I get I know what's going on uh, if it's something major over a certain financial threshold, because I give the pro property managers a certain financial threshold that if it's below this uh, number amount, don't even call me, just get it done. So. But they'll still let me know what happened, you know, sink broke here, but they'll just send it via email and I'll just, you know, through time, I'll just read it and see what's going on. And then when I get the owner statement, it'll be on there also. So I'm gonna stop right there, but it's two different dynamics. And, and so in that part, I agree with them hundred percent, but I, I'll come back after this, after hearing what you got to say, go ahead. Yeah. I was thinking the other day and I can see how using property management. Um, I mean, obviously it, yeah, it, it would be more of an ease, but seeing how using property management, I think at the start, you, wouldn't have that experience of managing properties yourself and knowing what to do in certain situations to then manage the companies. Um, Cause now I've been in a handful of situations that I know how to manage that. I think that if I were to initially put, have put a property management company um, in place in the beginning that I wouldn't know what to do if that situation was presented to me and I would have looked like a, novice trying to tell the property management company what to do and i think in that scenario just like in any business they would probably get over on you knowing that you're not as knowledgeable in the game as someone who has the experience um mm -hmm. so and i think you had mentioned something like that to me uh before that it knowing how to manage the tenants in those situations is a good learning experience and i didn't know what you had meant by that in the beginning but now going through it, I can I can see where you're coming from and see that it's important to know how to manage those companies because you can, you know, if if a if a issue is presented to you by a property management company and they tell you their resolution, you can know maybe another resolution that's better or know if the company is just full of it and you know they're just trying to get over on you and just charge more, but. Uh, I agree. I agree with you 100. percent And I remember that conversation that we had. And like I said, me, I I didn't know anything about 
rentals. Um, one day we we'll do a video and and uh, talk about how I got into rental properties. It's a funny story, but um, but yeah, you're right. And the thing was was going through that, going through the things with the first uh, couple tenants. That was it was a wealth of knowledge that I gained. But again, I also had a team. A team as in I knew a contractor who told me, you know, what to do in certain situations. It wasn't just me going and saying, oh, this happened. I can I always have somebody to bounce stuff off of. Brian Addison, uh, he talks about that also, you know, being around people. You don't want to be the smartest person in the room. I'm I'm not I'm paraphrasing what he's saying. This is probably not exactly how he said it, but you want to have a team around you, but you can't be the smartest one in every subject that there is. So in every different avenue that endeavor I go in, I always know somebody that um, that is more knowledge knowledgeable than me. Like, for instance, the barbershop that I bought, I know nothing. Not a thing about cutting hair. I know about customer service. I know about advertising. I know things like that, but I know nothing about cutting hair. So the first thing I did was I befriended and started getting mentored about somebody cutting hair. What, what is a good haircut? What is a bad haircut? What, what looks right? What don't look right? The dynamics of how a barbershop works and things like that. But I never want to be the smartest person. Like, and and this is a property manager when it comes to repairs and stuff like that. Uh, I want to be, I want to have somebody to have knowledge. And again, you got to have people on your team that. Uh, I'm still a phrase from Dave Ramsey of heart of a teacher. I mean, it's, it's people that, you know, that know a lot of information, but they're not open and willingness to share it because they like, again, with the contractors that I uh, know, all of them have a heart of a teacher willing to say, hey, this issue happened. But in the future, to save you money in X, Y, Z, do this, this, this and this, uh, you know, and though that relationship would help me understand property management more especially now talking to property managers and they come with an idea and i'm like oh well you don't have to do it like this just do it like this yeah it's gonna cost money but this is a more efficient way to do it uh for the long run for both of us you know i'm not cutting corners or or saying oh let's just jerry rig it or something like that but now i know more because again the property managers don't know much about construction they just uh you know outsourcing the job to people to contractors and you know some contractors out there to get you so just having that knowledge base at the beginning is good, but always, you know, you you want to be in there to understand what's going on, you know, knowing how the how it operates from top to bottom. But again, when you want to scale, you don't want to be sitting there still on that nine to five grind dealing with a tenant because it takes your attention away from the big goal. If your goal is to have, you know, you know, X number of properties you know, more than you think. It's hard to do both at the same time, unless you, like I said, have a team, you know, if you have a spouse, but if you're a one-man wrecking crew by yourself and you don't have, you know, let's say a significant other or something like that, that want to be a part of, you know, what you're doing, then having a property manager is the best way to go, especially for scalability. And Robert Kiyosaki, he talks about that too, that, you know, you don't want to, know everything about one thing but you want to know a little bit about everything and so having professionals in those specific fields a professional contract right. or professional you know whatever it may be um that you deal with in your team then yeah you'll get the most knowledge out of that person to know how to handle those situations i think that's very important i think that a lot of small business owners or mom and pops they um that don't scale, they get stuck in that little uh, niche where they don't want to do the work and learning about every other thing. So they're just focused in on on managing that, you know, just one side of things and not opening up. And and like and you know, this channel is about pats of money, and we always talk about freedom of time. That's what we talk about. The reason why people want mass pass of money is for freedom of time. If you sit there and be a landlord and let's say you got 10 units, let's just say 10 units close by you and you're sitting there dealing with the day to day issues from the tenants because problems are going to happen. Everybody, people might have this great idea that, oh, I can get rental properties and nothing happened. I mean, from new construction to already, I mean, investment properties that you buy that's used, you know, 
it's going to be problems. You're going to get phone calls. You're going to get tennis complaints. All tennis, not. I got lucky with the first two tenants I had, you know, starting off early on, you know, I got phone calls, but then now it's more, it's way more manageable. I mean, we talk maybe, you know, I mean, about issues, about issues. Uh, we talk maybe once every quarter if there's an issue or something like that uh, in that realm. But it's like really having property managers. Like I said, my, my team li literally live close by me. If it's, you know, a job that I can't do, I just... Outsource it, and most of the stuff I outsource it to uh, the construction team that I use here or the maintenance team that I have here. So, but the the part I want to get to is people people get obsessed, and then so like I was saying, you know, you got ten units, and you you talking about oh I want to be financially free, I want to be financially free, but you're not free. Even if you say oh I got ten units now, I can leave my job. You just traded one nine to five. To a, but this one ain't a nine to five. This is twenty four hour operation. You know, you get calls at any time, and then just think. I mean, you know me. Just think of me putting on a tube belt every day trying to go fix up. I'm gonna do more damage. <laughs> I'm gonna do more damage than good. You know, but but I know I know what to do now. If it's small, something small, I can get it done. And like I said, if if it's something, and literally my my team is like this. I can call a I can call the guy. And he would, he can, he'll be like, all right, this is what the issue is. He always says, this is what the issue is. This is how to fix it. And then he'll tell me like, you can do it, you know, or something that my team can do. I mean, he know my, you know, proficiency level on fixing stuff, but he was, but he always give me the option. Like, Hey, yeah, he was like, you can do it if you got time, but if not, then my team is happily to do it. And then, you know, for, for the few times that I got to call him, he always gives me that, uh, he always give me that option. And then sometimes I'm just too busy. I'm like, no, just go ahead and get it done. Um, and then, but if it's something I'm like, oh, I, I got some spare time. I'm just you know not doing nothing. Just I'm I'm already in the area. Then he'll be like, oh yeah, just do this. Or or he'll just get on the Facetime with me and be like, all right, yeah, do this, do this, do this, and fix it. But he has no problem either way. But again, but that I got off track a little bit. But all that does is. It's you trade one ninety five for another ninety five, and if you talk about passive money and you want to have your time back, then you don't have your time back. And if people get built uh, bent out of shape from this, uh, you know, eight percent, ten percent management fee, I think eight to ten percent is worth it to have my time. My time is very valuable, and like you know that I go to scale. I'm looking at deals all the time. You know, sometimes I gotta you know, lead the state and fly and lead the state to go get deals done. If I got to worry about tenants and I don't have a team around me and stuff like that, then I can't do none of that stuff. I got to, I'm always in one place trying to do a deal, but worried about something else that's going on over there. But the eight ten percent and just the FYI for people that's out there, the more units you have in a location, and this is again, going to the deal making aspect of it. And this is stuff that operators need to know is yeah you're doing a deal to acquire the house you can also do deals with property managers let's say you get over four units in an area and they can manage them all and be like all right well i'm giving you four units can we knock the percentage down to eight percent i've done that in different locales once i had enough scalable units for uh I mean, enough units that one property manager is managing usually if it was one or two units property managers will go hit you with the ten percent and then you can bring it down. I mean, I got some places down to 6%, just based on the number of units that I have. And then that's that's a way to uh, make it shape. So you can work and get that percentage down. But like Brian said, that it gives you your time back. I run, and I'm not saying I'm a you know dictator or nothing like that, but I run it just like the military, or I run it just like a corporation. What I mean by that is, and I was explaining it to a guy in the military, he said, how do you manage all of these things? Because every layman just think, oh, you had these rental properties. They had a mom and, or an uncle or something that had a rental property. And it was always working on it. And I told him, I said, I run it just like the military. And this guy is very high up ranking up in the military. And I said, you don't, you don't every day talk to privates. Privates, that's like the lowest rank in the military for people that don't know. Um, you don't talk to privates every day. And he said, no. I said, you talk to the head of a unit, head of the unit, that could be first sergeant or whatever. And then 
they dictate down your instructions, right? But you only got to deal with four to maybe five first sergeants. And he was like, yeah. I was like, that's the same way I run the rental, my rental business is I communicate through to the, or I send out my orders, my marching orders to the property managers and the property managers get it done. So instead of talking to every tenant, which is a lot of them, I don't have to talk to them. I just talk to the head. So I got seven, seven or eight property managers, I believe. I think seven, seven property managers. And then I just talk to them. You know, we meet up quarterly or whatever, you know, talk about different things. If it's an issue come up, then I handle the issue with them and then they they execute the marching orders. But another thing going to, you know, being able to manage property uh, managers, don't go out there and think that, oh, I got a property manager. Everything's good. I heard horror stories about people with property managers because they don't understand. You don't just grab somebody because they say, oh, I'm a property manager. When you get a property manager, you need to be interviewing them like they're coming for a job because your business is a job. They're managing your business. You need to interview them and ask them questions about how would you execute in this situation? What do you do in these situations? How uh, how long? I mean, how many times can a tenant be late before you don't give them the option to renew? You know, all the late payment penalties. You go through the whole plethora and interview them, and then that will give you an understanding of what to expect. And just like an interview at a job, you write write it down. So. And then you have a copy of the contract. So when, you know, an issue arrives, you can just be like, hey, this is how you said you operate. We need to operate like this. Let's do this. Let's do this. And but don't go to the first person that just throw up the title. Hey, I'm a property manager. Like they know what the heck they're doing. They don't. But you got to have that ability to manage those people. And that will save you a lot of time. I, I swear I got like 80 to 90 percent of my time back by not dealing with tenants and only dealing with property managers. And that gives me, all that time I got back, gives me enough time to sit there and look at the MLS, you know, look at the online resources, talk to uh, different realtors, different brokers and things like that to get off market deals, on market deals and things of that nature. So it helped me out a lot, man. Alex, you know how much I, uh, how much I'm on the MLS looking for deals in all realms. So, I need every every ounce and every minute I can get because I'm always looking for a deal. Yeah, I don't think Kirby sleeps. He two, three, four, five, six a.m. Like, all right, then we got videos. <laughs> like, okay, right. send me listings all the time. But yeah, but no, those are great analogies. Um, especially the, the military aspect. I know, um, a lot of uh, ex-military people view business in the same way as you know dealing it the same as you would in the military, but. No, great analogies, but we'll close it there. Um, guys, if you like the video, hit the like button. Um, leave a comment down below. Let us know if you're starting to invest in real estate and if you use property management or not. Share, subscribe, and we'll see you guys in the next video.